Think Gadget Reviews, News, and All About It. iPhone 5C Review Stripped of its cultural payload and heavyweight marketing, the new iPhone 5C is an iPhone 5 in a plastic neon jumpsuit. The back camera's the same. The screen's the same. The functional design's the same, in fact, the only changes of substance are the battery and case material, but more on that later. Not that a single prospective 5C buyer will reference its technical heritage in the coming weeks. No, those buyers will be too busy taking sides between two warring tribes to make such cool evaluations. On one side of the world's Apple stores, you'll have the haters, clutching their MacBook Airs while spitting corrosive bile at the 5C's lurid packaging. On the other side, squabbling to grab the last of the remaining 5C cases, you'll have an entirely new tribe of. Well, we're not sure what to call them. But we do know they'll be jolly extrovert, have a penchant for ultra-thin sans serif fonts, and be excitable, really bloody excitable. You probably know the tribe you're in, especially if you've read any of the scathing critiques of the 5C since its unveiling. But before you settle comfortably into your elitism, we'd ask you to stop a moment, the iPhone 5C's motives aren't quite what they seem. The iPhone 5C comes with iOS 7, Apple's most dramatic revamp of the iPhone's operating system ever. And it is dramatic, if anyone tells you otherwise, it's because they've been using iOS 7 since the first beta in June, so have grown used to it. You can be fiddling with the new iPhone 5C for days, and still be unearthing changes in the way the interface looks and works. The overhaul really runs that deep. Gone are the skeuomorphic icons and textures that have screamed iOS since 2007. Instead, you have minimalist icons, ultra-thin type, neon primary colors and subtle transparencies. Many of the gestures are all new, too from a swipe up to reveal the new control center panel, to left and right swipes in mail and within folders. iPhone diehards may momentarily panic, until they take a minute to realize that they're still at home, only someone has thrown the wood and leather into the skip, and swapped the house for a too cool for school digital consultancy in the middle of Rapongji. We've started a hardware review with the software, because iOS 7 is 70% of the story and critical to how the iPhone 5C tries to seduce you. It's not the first attempt to theme an interface with its casing, turn on a Microsoft W8 phone and start adjusting the modern tile colors, but the combination of iOS 7 and the 5C takes the game into extra time, with the new operating system's colors tuned to fit with the 5C's vivid casings. Buy a canary yellow 5C, and it will launch with yellow wallpaper. This thing is that themed. Regardless of whether the 5C disgusts or delights you, that shouldn't distract from the merits of the core system. So what do we think of iOS 7? It's beautiful. The icons are, almost, cohesive, attractive and usable. The type is, almost, tight and right. And the transitions, if you're happy to squint at the odd rough edge, are, almost, delightful. It's a remarkable achievement for Apple's design team, replace the design language that defined your products for thousands of developers and millions of users every day, and was so close to the heart of the man that built your company, and to come up for air with a powerful new statement that actually works. You'll find it even more incredible if you were one of the few to run the initial iOS 7 betas this summer, as we did. The first beta was shocking. The new iconography was as ugly and inconsistent as the typography. And while any beta has every right to be buggy, the new screen and folder transitions were rougher than you'd ever expect from Apple. That the final result has such cohesion and finesse is miraculous. Yes, you'll bump into Android and Windows 8 as you tap and swipe through iOS 7. Open its new calendar, Pure W8, right? Now try the lock screen, that's a Nexus, isn't it, albeit one that got locked in the cellar with a case of absinthe? But the whole is still enough Apple to be its own thing, enough of the past to hold its heritage, 
with enough of the new to be slightly scary. The real litmus test will come if you use the iPhone 5C for a few days, then suddenly switch back to an iPhone 4S or 5. Weird, is it? iOS 6 looks familiar, but suddenly aged and plottered, all buttons, bars, thick grey gradients and authentic textures, with the content elbowing its way through the hoarded furniture. By comparison, iOS 7 is zen. That said, and in direct contrast to our experience with the fives, we still found bugs and niggles. The settings screen quit twice, and the transition back to the home screen would land with a final jolt rather than a glide. Too many in the stuff team struggled to read some of the fonts or even recognize some of the icons. And we'd swear that there was the odd dodgy touch response, that is there was no response. There were no showstoppers in our time with the 5C, but it's clear that iOS 7, for all its brilliance, is still a work in progress. The screen, look familiar? Buy an iPhone 5C and you now own an iPhone 5 in a plastic and steel shell, a rather crude summary, Apple, but fundamentally true. You'll be looking at the same 4-inch, 326p retina screen, and taking pictures using the same 8MP camera. But the fact that the 5C is virtually a rehash shouldn't damn it. The iPhone 5 has remained a fiercely competitive device. So it's no surprise that the 5C gives many of its prime time rivals a run for their money. The 1136 by 640 Retina display is the same one that millions have been staring at since it first appeared on the iPhone 5, and has most of the attributes of the first Retina to appear in 3.5 in guise on the iPhone 4 in 2010. And it's none the worse for it, it's bright, viewing angles are excellent and it's a pleasure to look at. The color balance is on the warm side, but we're down to issues of taste, not competence. We wish that Apple would reconsider its dogged allegiance to 4-inch screens, surely a 4.3 in alternative wouldn't bring Cupertino crashing to the ground? Even if we also know why they've stuck with it. A vast swath of iPhone users want to be able to use it single-handed. And for that to work. The distance from the base of the handset to the top of the screen can't extend further than the length of the average human thumb, which just happens to be about 4 inches. Apple knows its users, and we know enough iPhone fans who would ditch the device the day that they couldn't bash out a text single-handed. But the new wave of Androids are now flooding the world over 4 inches, and we refuse to believe that not one of those proud new 1 or S4 owners, many or not have ever owned an iPhone. That said, Apple is still working miracles with the limited screen real estate, iOS 7 crams more content into the same space by stripping away navigational furniture. And as more popular apps begin to update their designs to fit with iOS 7 guidelines, so your new 5C will steadily improve. The iPhone 5C sticks with the 32-bit dual-core A6 processor that powered the iPhone 5, which you could see as a problem, especially when its new 5's big brother now packs the glamorous A7 64-bit chip, backed by an M7 Go processor to look after motion data. By comparison, the iPhone 5C looks like an anemic, and cheerily dressed, cousin. Indeed, in our N22 benchmark test it actually scored a little lower than the iPhone 5, 12,022 versus 13,608. But if you're happy to abandon any specification machismo for the trash it usually proves to be, the iPhone 5C is more than powerful enough for virtually any job. The iPhone 5 remained competitive until the end of its life, so it's no surprise that the 5C can still look most of its competitors in the eye. Response to a tap on the touch screen is all but instant. Apps switch without any stutter, and there's no lag when opening crucial items such as the camera. Any delays in using the 5C are more a result of the new animations introduced by iOS 7 than any flaw in the hardware. A few colleagues during our week with the 5C commented that the fly in icons as you opened the home screen could do with getting a move on. If you've already studied the 5C's spec sheets, you'll have spotted that it isn't a total line-for-line -line copy of the iPhone 5. In fact, 
The casing is slightly deeper, 8.97 mm versus the iPhone 5's 7.6 mm, presumably to house its slightly beefed up battery, 1507 mAh versus 1440 mAh. Apple claims 10 hours of 3G talk time for the 5C, a whole 2 hours more than the iPhone 5, and respectable 250 hours of standby. We won't claim to have conducted days of laboratory testing for this review, but we can say that on at least two occasions, our iPhone 5C showed 85% of battery remaining after 14-15 hours of standby and several hours of use. Which is pretty damned impressive and means that two days of light use before a recharge doesn't sound fanciful.